I'm going to show you how you can make a image black and white using Photoshop CS5. Um, I've taken a photograph of a flower. The keen eyed of you will notice that it's not a real flower, but I thought this would be a nice image to use for the different textures and things like that and the different tones that are in the image. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can actually make a photograph black and white in Photoshop. Um, so this is just one way that you can do it. So I've opened my image on Photoshop. I'm going to go up to image, adjustments, and hue and saturation. Here you find lots of different sliders and you'll find that these sliders do different things. So the hue will change the general colors in your image. So I'll show you what that does. Um, as you can see, the background colors change, the colors of the leaves change, the colors of the petals change slightly. So sliding it one way makes it go on one side of the spectrum and sliding it the other makes it go another. That would be quite nice actually, as it's like that. Um, as we're making this image black and white, you could slide it either way and when you make it black and white it won't really affect the tones or anything like that. One thing that will affect the tones is this slider at the bottom, the lightness. So if you slide it up, it makes your image lighter. If you slide it down, it makes your image darker. I'm going to put that back to one, so I'm going to click on that and go zero, so that's back to where it started. And I'm going to go to the slider which is going to make our image black and white. Uh, this is the most important one for this tutorial, um, the saturation bar. So you will notice if you pull the saturation bar up, it makes the colours very vibrant and it increases the chroma. But if you slide it the other way, it will reduce all of the colours to black and white and just a tonal image. So that's what we're looking to do in this tutorial. So I'm going to click OK. I would like the tones in this to pop a little bit more. So I'm not going to leave it just there. I'm going to try and increase the contrast. So there's again, there's a, a few ways that you can do this. So I'll show you uh, a couple of different methods of doing this. I'm going to go back up to image. I'm going to go to adjustments and I am going to go down to levels, which is actually near the top. And you'll find, again, there's some different sliders that you can use. And with some of these sliders, they affect one another. So you'll see I'm going to click on the light one and you'll see the medium one moves along with it. Um, but you can drag the medium one back up again if you prefer. So this method gives you more control over the lights and darks. Um, so you can make your darks a bit darker while keeping your medium tones about the same as they were. Or you could make your lights a bit lighter and adjust the medium tones as well. Um, this one does give you more freedom, but it can also mean that your image can look quite artificial. If you do it too far, it can look wrong. So it's up to you whether you want to have a little bit more free range with this or whether you want to try another version of um, this method. So you can go to image adjustments and you can go the, to the simple route of just going brightness and contrast and use the two sliders this way. So you could go brightness, contrast, I think that's a little bit too bright so I'm going to bring it down a bit but I'm going to bring the contrast up a bit and just adjust them that way. So there's two different ways of making your black and white image pop a little bit better too. So you should have gone from something that looks like this, a nice colourful image, to something that looks a little bit more like this which is a lovely black and white tonal image. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching.